Hey guys, here with the first q and I'm gonna knock out three questions here. So let's start it up. Number one, when at a fat loss plateau, do you recommend increasing cardio amount or decreasing calories until the scale starts moving again? So good question. This is gonna depend on a few factors. So where are your calories at now? If they're too low, you don't wanna decrease them anymore and that's gonna depend on the person. So uh, calorie intake is relative and then also, if you were to just increase your movement and burn more calories, um, expend more calories, is that maintainable? So are you already doing, you know, five or 10 hours of activity in a week? So that might not be um, realistic as far as maintaining that increased movement long term and then therefore maintaining that fat loss. So it's going to depend on where you're at with uh, as far as movement goes expanding calories and then also where your calories are relative to you and your body weight and and uh, your activity level so it's kind of a tough question to answer um i it, it would just be it depends and it could be one or the other or it could be even both if your calories are nice and high and your movement isn't that high you could kind of split the difference and maybe make a, a small calorie adjustment and then bump up your movement slightly as well. So sorry if that isn't uh, a, a definitive answer, but it's, it just depends. Number two, what's your opinion on using glutamine as a supplement for weightlifting? Um, I wouldn't, I, I don't see a point in using it for weightlifting specifically. Um, if you have some sort of uh, gut issue, if uh, maybe you've been eating foods that you weren't tolerating so well and you're trying to repair the gut, the gut lining, glutamine can have some benefits there, but um, in my opinion, I would just, I'd say skip it. I don't see a whole lot of use for uh, glutamine supplementation, especially with weightlifting. Uh, stretching before or after a workout. So that's gonna depend on kind of your situation. If something is really tight, for example, say you're gonna do some bench press and your pec feels really tight, I would recommend stretching that thing out. If if your movement is hindered, I would stretch um, in order to access that range of motion during that workout. So it's really gonna depend on how you're feeling. If you're feeling good, nothing's feeling tight, I like to just go through a physical rehearsal. So uh, start light with the bench press, for example, and then just keep increasing the weight slowly. Don't go straight to, to a heavy set. Uh, that's a great way to get injured. So just kind of slowly titrate up that weight and then um, let your body warm up and adjust to that to that movement, let your nervous system feel the weight and then warm up that way. But again, if, if you're feeling tight, hamstrings are tight and you're about to squat or something like that, nothing wrong with stretching before you work out. Um, also, you don't need to stretch right after your workout either. You can stretch at night, um, say you're rushing, you know, finish your workout, gotta get back to work on a lunch hour or something like that. You can stretch later on in the day and that's totally fine. You don't need to stretch right after a workout. Just, you know, get that movement in and if you have a yoga class later or something like that, that's more than enough that'll work. Um, thanks for everyone who sent in questions. If you have any more, post them in the comment section below or post them on my Instagram at N1Fitness or uh, Facebook, whatever, email me. So thanks for watching and we'll talk to you in the second one. See ya.